guys remember the good old days when it was every day you would read an article, wherever you were on the internet, you would read an article somewhere that said Bitcoin reaches its newest high. It reaches another new high, another new high. Well, things have changed dramatically and Bitcoin has absolutely crashed this year into an absolute disaster mode. And so I really want to do a super in-depth video on kind of discussing this and, and, and talking about like where Bitcoin's going in the future and just kind of viewing this. I think it's really important. Anybody that's in the, the, the markets of any kind, whether we're talking Bitcoin, whether we're talking, you know, commodities, whether we're talking the stock market, real estate, there are definitely some fundamental things you must understand. I think this is going to be an important video to just kind of explain like what exactly happened here guys so we're going to get into this all into detail so once again you know this this is an article here from november 16th 2017 all right bitcoin reaches its latest high it inches closer to eight thousand dollars all right now not even two weeks later november 28th bitcoin reaches all new highs as it hits ten thousand dollars per coin for the first time all of a sudden, another month goes by, less than a month, December 17, 2017, Bitcoin hits a new record high around $20,000 per coin, okay? Now, to put this into context, every $1,000 Bitcoin went up in price, all right? Yeah, that added around $17 billion to the market cap of Bitcoin, all right? $17 billion for every went up. So if it went up, you know, let's say uh, $10,000. So it went from 10,000 to 20,000. It essentially added around $170 billion in extra market cap, which is hard to even fathom. Even a monstrous company like an Apple or an Amazon of the world, right? Even if those were to add $170 billion in a month time, that would be like unreal, right? This is a coin doing this, okay? A coin that in the grand scheme of things was still very irrelevant. Could it be something big someday? Could be, but a lot of things could be big someday, right? This was just a coin, all right? This was just a coin out there. Could be something someday. It has to do with blockchain. A lot of people are excited about it, right? And we've seen, you know, things have changed obviously very dramatically here over the course of this year. Bitcoin bloodbath nears dot com levels as many tokens go to zero. It wasn't just Bitcoin that was going up, it was every single token pretty much out there. Bitcoin's meteoric rise last year had many observers calling it one of the biggest speculation manias in history. The cryptocurrency's 2018 crash may help cement it in its place of bubble record books, down 70% from its December high after sliding for a fourth straight day on Friday. Bitcoin is getting ever closer to matching the NASDAQ Composites index of a 78% peak to trough plunge after the, the dot-com bubble. I compared it to the dot-com bubble many, many times, and it looks like that was a pretty realistic comparison there. Um, lesser known tokens have been hit the hardest. Dead coin lists are around 800 that are effectively worth nothing. While another website puts the tally at more than 1,000, fewer than 4% of coins with market caps from 50 million to 100 million were successful of promising according to March analysts of an ICO advisory firm status group. Bitcoin may not go to zero, but it's very much a bubble, this gentleman says. Now, if we look here, Bitcoin still has a market cap of over $100 billion. Yes, you heard me right. Even after this dramatic fall, Bitcoin still has a market cap of over $100 billion dollars guys over 100 billion dollars all right so it's not like bitcoin has become completely worthless it's still worth over 100 billion at least in the valuation of where people are valuing it okay so first off like my beef with bitcoin has never been whether bitcoin is nothing or whether bitcoin is going to be the next huge thing i'm like it could be we got to see how things play out but you can't go valuing stuff in this world with these ridiculous valuations on it which bitcoin at one point had it was getting close to a 400 billion dollar market cap, okay? Meaning the value of Bitcoin was around $400 billion. That's ridiculous, okay? For something that's literally pretty much irrelevant to the average person out there, you can't go put a $400 billion uh, you know, price tag on it, right? It's irrelevant to almost every single person in the world. Could it be something big someday? It could, but you can't just value something because it could be big someday, okay? Even right now, Bitcoin still has a $100 billion market cap on it, okay? Which people like to, you know, say Tesla is massively overvalued, okay? People love to say Tesla, oh my gosh, it's so overvalued. That company is so overvalued. 
Tesla right now, a company that is literally changing the world, okay? Literally changing the way people are gonna drive in the future, all right? And some people even feel it's gonna change the whole game in electricity and solar power and some of those kind of things. I'm not convinced of that yet. I'm just convinced of the whole, you know, they're changing the automotive game, right? But Tesla right now has somewhere around, I think it's around a $55 billion uh, dollar market cap. Maybe it's up to $60 billion now. Somewhere between that, $55 billion and $60 billion dollar market cap, okay? A company that's fundamentally transforming the world with somebody leading that company who, uh, you know, is almost looked up to as like a business god, right? You have that valuation. This is a company people say is way overvalued. And yet Bitcoin still has a valuation of over $100 billion, guys, okay? No, you know, I don't know one person in real life who's out there using Bitcoin, but damn do I know a lot of people who are either getting Teslas or want to get Teslas. I see more and more of them on the road every single day, all right? Two totally different things, but two companies, two, two deals that have way different valuations, okay? A coin that has uh, over $100 billion market cap, a company that has, you know, 55 to $60 billion market cap is, is two totally different things, okay? So, what exactly has happened here with Bitcoin? What exactly happened? Well, first off, you got to understand there's a, there's a few things that happened, okay? The first part is a lot of Bitcoin is owned by China, okay? China. So what China was doing is they were doing a lot of market manipulation, okay? We'll just call it double M. They, they were doing a lot of market manipulation and getting that price to go high. If you don't already know, there are ways you can trade not just coins, but stocks and whatnot. And you can literally manipulate their price if you have enough ownership on that, all right? Now, when it's a regulated thing, it's pretty much illegal. And if you get caught, you can get in some trouble, okay? Which is really like a slap in the wrist. Maybe you go to jail for six months or something like that. We know white collar crimes are, are kind of uh, a joke, right? But needless to say, like when you have, let's say a 50% ownership in this, right? Which is what China does. So you can get a lot of big players together you can get a lot of big players together and you can get them to easily, easily manipulate that price up. It is not rocket science. You could go way into depth on this and research for yourself. It is not rocket science. You can manipulate pretty much any market you want, whether we're talking stocks, whether we're talking anything that's traded out there, you know, every day or something like that or is traded in, in big volume. You can manipulate it with pricing, okay? It goes on on Wall Street still to this day. I can almost guarantee you that, guys. It still goes on even to this day to a certain extent. You get enough big players players together, you can manipulate prices down or up, okay? China, they want to manipulate that price up and up and up, all right? So you have market manipulation, and then all of a sudden you have uh, a ton of hype, okay? Massive amounts of hype, you know, coming in toward Bitcoin, like unparalleled in anything I've ever seen in my life. And, and I've been in the stock market for 10 years. I've seen a lot of companies be hyped out to unbelievable levels. You know, oh my gosh, this company is going to be the next big thing. They are the big thing. This is going to, they're going to grow so much. I've seen tons of hype over time, right? Tons of hype. All right. I've never seen anything even close even close to crypto, okay? Not, there's nothing even comparable, okay? I don't care whether, care whether we're talking about Amazon, Netflix, Tesla, I've never seen the type of hype that was around crypto in its heyday, which its heyday was really around uh, November, well, basically October through December of uh, 2017. Through that time, I've never ever seen anything even remotely close to that type of hype. The hysteria, the, it's just going up forever from so many people and and it's the next big thing and you got to get in on this now and if you don't get in on it you're going to be really sorry you're going to be really sorry you don't get in on this that's what they were saying i would you know every time i do a bitcoin video i would get a, you know so many comments it was ridiculous you don't know what you're talking about uh, you know bitcoin's going to 40,000 next year 50,000 100,000 you're going to be so sorry you didn't buy in you're just mad cuz you didn't buy in and now we're at 10,000 20,000 i used to get ridiculous amounts of comments the hysteria the hype around crypto was uh, near parabolic levels, okay? And a part of this was because the price just kept going up, which just attracted more and more people, okay? And the, the, which attracted more and more people as far as organically, okay? So what this basically means is people would start searching, okay, on Google and whatnot about crypto and wanting to learn because they're here, this, this, this coin's going up so much, all right? And, and so people started searching on Google and all these different websites trying to learn about crypto, okay? And, and if you were posting anything about crypto videos or a crypto website or something, the amount of clicks you were getting during that time period were unbelievable. I know, okay, when I did my Bitcoin crash coming 2018 video, it did like 
300 plus thousand views, which is crazy for this channel. We never get that kind of views, right? Uh, it's like 10, maybe 20,000 a video to get 300,000 is just like ridiculous. And that's what that video ended up doing, okay? So anything, people are just searching it, wanting to watch about it, learn about it, everything, okay? And just more and more people are getting involved because they saw prices going up and they're like, oh my gosh, I can make so much money from this. Well, unfortunately, that's not the way it ended up working out, right? Then on top of that, on top of all this organic stuff going on, you had you know companies and different people placing ads, okay? So, you know, for instance, the, Mr. Ty Lopez, he jumped on the bandwagon, right? Ty Lopez uh, started doing all types of ads on YouTube and on social media and whatnot about a cryptocurrency course. He was teaching people about how to invest in cryptocurrency and he was getting these people that had supposedly made a lot of money in crypto together and teaching you about crypto and he was placing ads all over the place and he was just one guy, right? I remember seeing a lot of his ads, but there were tons of different companies and tons of different people who were placing ads, trying to make uh, you know money off crypto some way, trying to get people their crypto web Website, trying to get people to buy their crypto course or membership or whatever it is. There's tons of people who are placing ads out there, which was making even more traffic start to become organic after the ads were shown, okay? And it got even more people interested and these people would hype it out even more and be like, oh my gosh, if you didn't buy Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin three years ago, here's what you would make and whatnot. And it was just hype, 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 hype. And so you build into this massive, massive machine, okay? And this is what ended up peaking crypto, okay? And now we we gotta talk about what ended up taking it down, but this is what ended up peaking. You had all this organic traffic, you had people placing ads, you had a price that just kept going up, you had market manipulation going on from a lot of different market participants, and uh, all this did was make it go up, and then you had all these smaller coins that were coming out, and they were going up a ton, and people were like trying to find the next coin that's gonna go up a thousand percent, ten thousand percent, and you'd hear these stories of some you know kid that's you know 20 years old, he invested you know his only one thousand dollars into some crypto coin and now he's got 180,000 and he just bought a new uh, Lamborghini or whatever like you hear all these crazy stories right so that that gets us to the peak okay that gets us to 20k on uh, on Bitcoin all right that gets us to 20k on Bitcoin now what ended up taking us from 20k to now we're you know I don't know 5900 or 6000 or 6100 somewhere around there what took us from basically 20k to 6k in a matter of let's say six to seven months okay that's all it took that's a massive decrease in a, in a six to seven month period I've never seen anything like that in my life. Like I said, the only thing, well, I guess, you know, technically it happened in my life, but uh, um, you know, when the tech bubble happened, that did happen in my life, but I wasn't in the stock market or anything at that time. But that's the closest thing that's in my lifetime that we've ever seen, you know, in, in terms of, it, there's no been no recession. There's been no, you know, thing that's happened in the global economy that made everybody sell off all assets, okay? Real estate prices have gone up over this time. Stock market prices have just kind of, you know, stayed around the, where they are, but yet Bitcoin and, and crypto in general, many of them are, you know, Bitcoin's probably the best performing one of some of them. Some of them have dropped 80, 90, 100%, literally lost all their value, all right? So what happened? You had uh, regulation come in. You had regulation come in. Um, you had the government start to come in because basically this was gonna start getting really dangerous. Um, once you get too many people involved in something like this, it's it's obvious you're going to get a massive, a massive amount of people hurt. Some hurt, you know, in a little way. Somebody invests, you know, they're only two hundred dollars. They invest in some crypto and they lose that two hundred dollars. You know, that stinks for them. Other people went crazy. You know, we know there are a lot of people that ended up doing BitConnect, which was a whole different deal. Okay, separate from Bitcoin and whatnot. But a lot of people did BitConnect and they put literally their entire life savings or something very close to their entire life savings in it, and they lost a hundred percent of that. If we can assume people were doing that with BitConnect, I can almost guarantee you a ton of people were doing that with Bitcoin and a lot of different cryptos, all right? And a lot of people unfortunately lost everything or in the majority of their wealth and that's pretty sad, right? That's pretty sad. So regulation and the government had to come in, all right? That helps force out some of the market manipulation. Once again, it's still possible to you know manipulate, manipulate some markets, but it's much harder when things are regulated and, and you got the government kind of over here watching what's going on, okay? Much harder for market manipulation manipulation to happen. So between these two, that hurt very bad, okay? Then all of a sudden, you know, price of Bitcoin starts to drop, all right? And it starts to drop in a major way, January, February. And what ends up, th this ends up just killing the hype, okay? This ends up killing the hype because you need uh, assets to keep increasing in price to keep the hype going. But if things start decreasing, and especially in a big way, all of a sudden 10, 20%, all of a sudden the hype starts to leave. Now at first, 
the hype boys were still saying, you know, oh, you still need to buy. It's just a little dip here. We're going to be much higher soon. And that's what, you know, the, the, the people were saying out there, right? Well, unfortunately, things got more extended. The losses got bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? And so then virtually all the hype ended up leaving, okay? Then you had social medias that started outlawing ads for crypto, okay? No more ads for crypto on a lot of the social media sites, um, which hurt crypto even more because this was driving traffic to uh, people's products and things like that and services they were selling, websites and all that stuff. They were driving traffic to those and they were saying, you know, you need to get on this crypto bandwagon. Well, if all of a sudden you can't do ads around that, you can't get new customers, which kills even more hype, which sends prices down even more, okay? And then you've obviously had some big players selling out. It's not just the smaller players. You've had a lot of big players selling out. In order to get something to move down in a big way like this, you need big players selling out, okay? We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of value Bitcoin has lost. In order to get that type of move down, it's not just uh, some kid, you know, in a office selling a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and it's being like I'm done with this or some crypto it's big players selling out okay you want to get a market to move down like that you need big players to start selling out of these coins all right which is essentially what has happened here. So you've had big players sell out, you got the hype leaving, no more no more ads in crypto. Some are you know, coming back a little bit, they're allowing some more things. Market manipulation is so much harder when you have government regulation and whatnot. Um, and this is just a, a bad, bad deal. But there's some things we gotta keep in mind, okay? Is Bitcoin done? I would not say Bitcoin is done in the sense of, could Bitcoin still be something big someday? It could, it could be something big someday. I don't know, okay? I don't know, no one really knows. You're, you're speculating on if it could be something big, all right? Could it? Maybe, okay? But still, right now, as of today, Bitcoin still has a market cap of over $100 billion. In my opinion, it should not have even close to that type of market cap. Just because you might be something big someday doesn't mean anything, okay? When very few people are even using these coins, okay? People are still invested somewhat in these coins and just holding them, hoping they're gonna be worth a lot more someday. But in terms of people actually using these for transactions, it's a minuscule amount of people out there, okay? A minuscule amount of people. So this type of deal where you got a $100 billion market cap on Bitcoin is ridiculous, is preposterous. In my opinion, Bitcoin right now should have between a five and $10 billion market cap on it. I think in my opinion, that would be fair for Bitcoin in its current state, okay? And the reason being is it does have that potential that it could be, you know, big someday, okay? It does have some cool things behind it. But can you put $100 billion on something that's cool that could be big someday? You can't do that, man. You've got to have a lot of people using this, okay? You've got to have a lot of people using this. You've got to have a lot of businesses using this. You've got to start seeing it in your everyday life where, you know, you're hearing about somebody's making transactions in Bitcoin and whatnot, and it's actually becoming a fundamental part of their life. Then you can start getting a hundred, two hundred, three hundred billion dollar valuation. But until that happens, it's just spec, man. It's just spec until that actually happens and it starts getting used in everyday people's lives. Until that happens, it's a spec thing. And in, in my opinion, it's probably a spec thing. It's worth somewhere around five to $10 billion right now, which is a, a monstrous drop from here. Not saying it's gonna go that, because it might not. It might not, you know, just because an asset might should go somewhere, right? A lot of people feel Tesla's overvalued right now or Netflix is overvalued. Just because people feel that way doesn't mean those stocks are gonna necessarily drop 50% value or 70% value, um, but it's something that keep in mind. So, um, you know, that's, that's what happened with Bitcoin, man. That's what ended up happening. That's why it went up so much, so dramatically. And, uh, this is honestly why it's, it's dropped so dramatically. So hope you guys learned a lot from this, you know, just keep this in mind because you're going to see more things like this that happen in the future where asset prices on different things just get out of hand, whether it be a piece of real estate, whether it be real estate in general, whether it be one stock in particular, whether it be all stocks in, in general, whether it be maybe cryptos again in the future, we'll We'll just have to see whether it be a commodity of some time some kind like sometimes just prices get out of whack they, then they need to come down guys and that's exactly what's happened here to bitcoin so hope you guys really enjoyed this hope you learned a lot as always make sure you follow me on instagram if you have not already i'm posting quite a bit on there thank you for watching have a great day